So for something that I'm working on, I actually need an algorithm to cut a convex uh, shape um, in half using a plane. Uh, an example of this is taking the sphere here and cutting it in half like so, like this, and you end up getting this object here. Now, the this may sound quite simple. Um, it may seem like all you have to do is take the plane here and extrude any of the bottom points upward onto the plane or just remove the plane or the points entirely however the problem is actually a little bit more complicated than that and I'll explain why in a moment so if you want to cut an object into um, in half using a plane intersection then um, the first thing you have to realize is just doing just extruding the points upward will not work the reason for this is, let's say I have this pyramid object here. Um, and I have this pyramid object and I cut it in half like so, so that the green on the bottom is going to keep this part of the uh, object. Now, if I originally had the same idea where I would push vertices downwards and, and to the area where the plane is, you'd end up getting something that looks a little bit like this. And the reason is because the um, is because you're extruding only one point downward. You're not actually cutting it in half. You want something that looks like this, not something that just puts this point downward onto the plane. Now, we can solve this issue by just having all of our triangles uh, like so. So I have a cube here and this is the cube that I intend to uh, slice um, and uh, I'm going to explain uh, how we're going to slice this. So we take our intersection here and we put it on this cube. Now if the intersection is anywhere uh, where the cube isn't, where a triangle isn't, then we don't really have to worry about that triangle. Um, we can get each point or each part of the triangle by using a dot product with this plane intersection and we can tell um, which side each point is on in the plane. I can tell if this uh, if it is on the deleted side or if it is on the keep side. Now if all three points of the triangle are on the deleted or keep side you likely you don't really have to worry about the triangle. If the triangle, if the entire triangle is on the delete side, don't add the triangle to the final mesh. If the triangle is on the add side, add the triangle in its entirety to the final mesh. Now the problem comes in when this plane starts intersecting with some of these triangles. Now you have to figure out some extra math. So let's go over here to um, another box here. And this box is made of triangles. Everything is made of triangles, and um, in this algorithm we will be using, or the data we will have is a mesh of all of the triangle vertices. Now, let's simplify this a little bit by not putting this uh, just in here. Let's do it per triangle. So again, if our plane is like this and the triangle is on one side of the plane, we don't have to worry about it. It could be anywhere like this and we don't care about that triangle um, because it's entirely on one side of the plane. However, again, the problem comes in when we do this. So the simple solution to this problem is to simply go, okay, well, we have three points. Let's just take this side here, um, find out where it intersects the plane here um, when trying to go to both of these points. And you end up getting something that looks roughly like this. And you get yourself a nice little triangle that looks a little something like this. And there is your new triangle. Now this is technically correct, however the problem comes in when this plane moves for, from a different position. So let's pretend that we're actually on this one. Now, if you were to do the same thing and check with this point to this point, and this point to this point, you'd actually end up not getting any points at all except for this point, because the plane intersection isn't facing the right way. So you have to check every single possible scenario of points on the plane. So if the plane is on this side, you shoot to these two, or you go to this point, to those two points over there, 
Um, if it is over here, then you go to those down points. If it is on this final like triangle thing here, then you find the intersection between those two points. Um, and then you also have to take into consideration if both, if two points are on this side of the plane. Now, two points are on this side of the plane, and awesome, now we have four points. Well, wait a minute, everything has to be made of triangles. So we can't do anything with these four points. So what we're going to have to do is actually turn these four points into triangles simply by um, m merging uh, the middle points with the uh, corner two points. So you take the intersected points here and combine them with the two points here and you end up making two triangles, uh, this one and this one here. And congratulations, now you have the two triangles and you add that to your final mesh. Okay, good, good, good. So that's all good and working. Um, however, we still have a problem where we actually now are done adding the triangles to the final mesh. And it will look something like this. However, there's a problem. So if I was to cut this, um, this object here, just like so, these triangles here would be um, these triangles here would be fine. These triangles, uh, you would have one, two, and your final object would look like this, with each triangle, and then you have two triangles on the bottom. Obviously, I didn't draw them though. Um, so you end up turning this triangle here into this quad kind of thing here. Now the problem is this space here is actually empty. There is nothing in this space here. There are no triangles. We haven't added um, any triangles here because they've actually never existed in the first place, which means now we have to add the triangles here. Um, as of now, your final mesh, um, if it were to be a concave uh, collider, it would look something like this because we haven't added any collision or any extra triangles into this hollow space area. So you could just like go in it if you wanted. Um, and the way to solve this is um, more simpler than you would think. So let's go over here to our triangle again. Clear off our points. So we have our two points here that we intersected with when trying to get to these positions here. Amazing. So now we have these two points on the plane. We add those to a, an array or a list. And later on, we iterate through that list and you end up probably and you end up getting all four points here. So you end up getting all uh, four points here and by simply returning um, the data that you got from this here, these two points here that you got on the plane. And now that you have the data from what is on the plane, you can simply construct a um, couple of polygons depending on the size of how many points there are. So depending on how many points there are, you add more triangles. So you select the first point, and then you select the second point, and then you select the third point and make a triangle from that. Then you select the third point and the fourth point and make a triangle from that. And then you select the fifth point and the sixth point and make a triangle from that. And the sixth and the seventh and you make a, and then so on. So then you get um, this kind of thing here. Um, the reason that we're doing this instead of having something in the middle going out is because it's less triangles. Um, even though the mesh may look a little bit nicer, it's um, two less triangles than it normally would be. Um, for instance, this barrel prop here actually does do a similar algorithm where uh, triangles are pointing into this one thing here. It looks ugly, but it saves on triangles and processing, so it's better in the long run. Um, now that you have your uh, points or your triangles like this, you can assemble them and you'll end up making something that looks a little bit like this. You simply add the this new triangle calculation to your final mesh and you end up getting an object that looks something like this with your triangles on it like this. Now there is one more issue that we have to confront when slicing objects um, with this kind of plane. So there are such things as rounding errors and rounding errors are very very fun. So let's pretend that we have this plane and it is perfectly, perfectly, perfectly aligned on these two points here. Um, in my code, I make it so if a point is perfectly aligned on the plane, then it will 
be um, under the plane. I just that's how my code works. But I'm sure it could be different um, depending on other people's code. Um, so these points may like differ by literal like point zero 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 one, um, like it, like insanely small, and you end up. So let's pretend this point here is below the plane and this point here is above the plane. So you shoot this point to this point here and your ray actually ends up missing that point there and it shoots out to infinity like way over here. You actually end up creating a really weird looking spike that comes out of nowhere even though you didn't really you, you're just kind of wondering why in the world that happens. The solution to this problem that I found was if the intersection never actually occurs then you just end up making it this point here. Um, so like for instance like if if uh, the plane intersection from this point to this point never hits then you just make it um, the final mesh calculation that point and then now you have your three points you make a triangle from that and there you go now you're done with your final mesh once you have all of your triangles that you've been cut from your algorithm it'll look uh, again it'll look something like this but with um, and then you combine that into the final mesh and you end up getting a cut object that looks something like this so even though it may seem a little bit simple on the front um, it ends up actually being more complicated than I originally imagined. Uh, that is it for this video. Hopefully you understood it enough uh, to maybe use it in your own practices. Uh, yeah.